They're some of the biggest Playboy scammers. Let's get right into their scams and what they do with the money. Number five, not a scammer. Playboy Karan Mishra is an alleged fraudster that scammed older people worldwide out of their life savings. Mishra lived a lavish lifestyle that he bragged about on Instagram and Facebook. He used social media to share his global jet setting, took pictures with luxury cars, and always wore expensive designer clothes. YouTuber Jim Browning revealed Mishra's crimes to the world in a 2021 interview with the Daily Mail. He exposed Mishra for ripping off British pensioners. Browning hacked Mishra's phone call center in India and obtained records where Mishra spoke about his greed, talking about how when you first start making money, all you want to do is make more. He said he needed a private jet, but had to make more money first. He bragged about things he liked to buy, including drinking Blue Label Johnny Walker whiskey worth $750. Browning runs a YouTube channel that exposes scams and has even led to some arrests. He took to YouTube several years ago so that he could warn others of all the scams that were out there. Three years later, he started hacking scammers' computers and sharing the results on his channel. He goes along with frauds, giving fake names and credit card numbers so that the scammers don't suspect him. One of Mishra's victims was Thomas Mulligan, an elderly retired former surgeon for the British National Health Service. Mulligan received a phone call on his landline from an Amazon cybersecurity representative that wanted him to help stop hackers. However, Mulligan was not speaking to an Amazon representative at all. He was on the phone with Mishra, talking to the criminal he was supposed to be helping stop. He trusted Mishra, who already knew his bank details. Mishra told him he was being chased for outstanding debt because the scammers used his account. He pressured Mulligan into paying £10,000 into a specific bank account so that they could use it to chase the money and find the criminals. Afterward, he would be given a full refund. Mishra instructed him to download software to help track the criminals, and Mulligan unwittingly gave Mishra access to everything on his computer, including personal documents. Browning was watching Mishra at the time and caught him amid his scam. He contacted Mulligan and stopped the transaction. Mishra scammed his victims of millions of dollars. He did this by coaxing them into downloading TeamViewer, the software that would give him access to their computers and cell phones. Once he had the victim's account information, he drained them of their savings. When Browning hacked into Mishra's computer, he found spreadsheets with thousands of customers' details, including passwords and account numbers. Mishra had scripts that served as guides on how to scam victims by gaining their trust. He also had logos for major companies to seem more valid. One of the scripts had Mishra pose as an an employee who needed to warn victims that hackers in Nigeria accessed their computer's IP addresses and gained access to all of their financial details and personal information. Some of the files on his laptop had selfies of him posing with an expensive watch and pictures taken at a call center, although it can't be confirmed if that's where he committed his crimes. Other files contained pictures of personal documents and a meme of a room covered in cash that said, the only room I would like to clean. There are fraudulent call centers that buy victims' personal information, like their dates of births and addresses, and then sell it to other scammers. The Daily Mail broke his story. Despite all of the evidence against him, when they confronted him at his home in Kolkata, India, he denied all accusations, telling reporters that all he did for work was run stationary shops in India with his father. Number four, Sullied Enterprises. Marco Perez, also known as Sully Perez, was the founder and director of Permian Basin Propens Inc. The company was supposed to sell propens, like sand, for fracking operations, but that was a front for a Ponzi scheme. He solicited investor money by misrepresenting his company and ran the operation from 2017 until 2022. Perez made $14 million off the scheme and put the funds towards elaborate personal purchases, like his wedding, property, vacations, a helicopter, and luxury vehicles. He liked the 
travel in style and bought many cars, including a Rolls Royce, a BMW, and a Cadillac Escalade. He told investors that their money would go towards purchasing discounted frack sand, which would then be resold at a profit to fracking operations around and in the Permian Basin. The Permian Basin is the largest sedimentary basin in western Texas and southeastern New Mexico. It has natural gas, rich petroleum, and potassium deposits. It's drilled by oil producers like Chevron. He promised them guaranteed substantial returns on their investments and that they'd get all of their money back plus the profits from the resale. His pitch was enticing to investors, particularly as he told them they would get their money back quickly. Perez's scheme was a classic Ponzi scheme. He used investor money for his personal expenses and kept the scheme running by using a portion of new investor money to pay previous investors. He was investigated by the FBI and the Securities Exchange and Commission who uncovered the truth behind his scheme. In April 2022, he pleaded guilty to engaging in monetary transactions, property derived from specified unlawful activities, and one count of wire fraud. He was sentenced to 163 months in prison in order to pay $14 million in restitution. Number three, mining nothing. Mining Capital Coin was supposed to be a cryptocurrency mining and investment platform, but its CEO, Louis Capucci, used it to orchestrate a $62 million worldwide investment fraud scheme. He lured investors with mining packages, a network of cryptocurrency mines with a guaranteed weekly return on investment. Another product he sold was trading bots, which he claimed could make thousands of trades per second and give investors daily returns. The company began in 2017, and Capucci built a strong network of investors when he promised that if they invested a minimum of $125 that day, they'd get a 1% return every day indefinitely. Those profits would come from trading cryptocurrencies, traditional stocks, and Bitcoin mining. He worked with a business partner, Emerson Pyers. The cost of Bitcoin mining machines is upwards of $4,000, and the pair claimed they owned more than 4,500 of those machines. They showcased the machines in videos on social media where they shouted over the sound of the motors whirring in the background. Capucci knew how to make his business look legitimate. He lied about his background, saying that he studied computer science at Harvard University and then worked for the FBI for eight years. He bragged about the company's charitable work, saying that he partnered with the Clinton Foundation and the World Bank. Crypto blogger Peter Obi reviewed the mining platform. He calculated that MCC's $50 monthly membership and 3% withdrawal fee made it unlikely for investors to make money without referring other investors. MCC's referral process was similar to other crypto scams he had researched. Capucci and Pyers had over 65,000 investors who invested $62 million. The partners paid themselves monthly Bitcoin salaries ranging from $5,000 to $20,000. They made extravagant purchases. Capucci bought a Lamborghini, two Ferraris, a yacht, a Mercedes, and $10,000 worth of designer clothes. Pyers purchased a Lamborghini, a Mercedes, a Harley Davidson, and a Land Rover. When Capucci's third wife became pregnant in 2020, he threw a gender reveal party where two Ferraris and a Lamborghini shot blue smoke out of the exhaust pipes, elaborately telling their guests that the couple was having a boy. Capucci's son's first birthday party was over the top, and he even had a live giraffe. His outrageous displays of wealth alarmed his daughter-in-law, Caitlin Capucci. They went shopping together, and he offered to buy her whatever she wanted. She seemed uncomfortable, prompting him to open his bank account on his phone to show her that he had $4 billion. She didn't understand where the money came from. All that she knew was that it kept growing. Investors were initially told they could cash out on BitChain whenever they wanted. But whenever they went to cash out, there were delays and roadblocks. Capucci said to them that the issues was with BitChain, which was building new interfaces, slowing down transfers and withdrawals. Capucci's life began to fall apart. According to court documents obtained by the Daily Beast, he was sued in Lucy County Court for failure to repay an $11,000 loan from 2015. He failed to pay $25,127 in rent on one of his other businesses. He divorced his second wife in 2019, and his ex-wife claimed he stopped paying the mortgage on their home despite it being a part of the divorce agreement. When asked why he hadn't paid it, he said he didn't want to. The Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, filed a 25-page lawsuit against Capucci and 
tires. In the suit, the commission accused them of running a fraudulent company that scammed investors. When Pyers spoke with investigators, he admitted that the business was never in operation in the U.S., and the SEC found in their investigations that it wasn't a real business. Capital Coin was the cryptocurrency Capucci invented and paid his investors in, which was found to be worthless. BitChain, the platform that investors used for cashouts, was owned by Capucci too. He registered BitChain's website and then paid to ensure the registration was private. When the SEC issued subpoenas against MCC, Capucci immediately shut down bank accounts, offloaded his assets, and sold his belongings, including two properties, a car, and his yacht. At the time of the subpoena, he had six different bank accounts, two PayPal accounts, and dozens of digital wallets. He operated bank accounts in the name of the other 17 companies he claimed to own. He had $18.5 million in crypto assets when MCC was active. Pyres and Capucci fled to Brazil when they were served by the SEC. In May 2022, Capucci was charged with conspiracy to commit wire fraud, conspiracy to commit securities fraud, and conspiracy to commit international money laundering. He denies all allegations. His trial is ongoing, and he faces up to 45 years in prison for his crimes. Number two, Wolf of Old Hall Street. Stephen Evans was named the Wolf of Old Hall Street after he engaged in a Ponzi scam where he stole 4.4 million pounds. Evans ran his fraudulent company in Liverpool, but his influence reached as far as the United Arab Emirates, where many of his victims were. He convinced investors to hand over large sums of money so that he could invest it on their behalf, but used it for his own gains instead. Evans went to prison for his crimes in 2014. Evans lived in the UAE and worked as a financial advisor and stockbroker from 2007 until 2010. He soon created Stephen Evans Investments Limited, also known as SE Investments, when he began scamming clients he lived in Dubai and the Isle of Man for tax purposes. The Isle of Man is a British dependency between England and Ireland in the Irish Sea. He convinced his clients to give him money to be invested. His past work experience made investors trust him, and they had no idea that their money was being used for different purposes. Like most Ponzi schemes, he was under pressure from old investors who wanted to know where their money was. Evans used money from new investors to pay the old ones. One man gave him 3.7 million pounds and never got his money back. Investors supported Evans's luxurious lifestyle. Between 2010 and 2013, he made countless elaborate purchases. He bought 20 luxury cars, including a lime green Lamborghini for himself and a Porsche 911 for his girlfriend. He bought corporate sponsorship deals at Liverpool and Everton soccer clubs. He burned through 4.4 million pounds, spending 1.5 million pounds on luxury cars, 36,000 pounds on yachts, 300,000 pounds on jewelry, and 250,000 pounds on a racehorse. His extreme purchases didn't end there. He spent £280,000 on travel expenses, including chauffeurs, flights, and hotels. He rented properties at exclusive addresses and wore designer clothing like handmade bespoke suits. He bought a racehorse that he called Fat Gary. Not only did he have to pay the initial £250,000 for the animal, but he also needed to cover £50,000 in stabling fees and gave £15,000 to Chester Racecourse to sponsor a race under the Fat Gary banner. He didn't spend all of the stolen money on himself. His charitable donations included almost £60,000 to Marina Dalglish's cancer appeal and £52,000 to celebrity hairdresser Herbert Howe's charity. In 2012, one of his clients hired a private detective who started tracking Evans. He turned himself into police custody and he was tried at Liverpool Crown Court. His lawyer, Christopher Stables, defended him by saying that Evans was reeled in by the extravagance of the lifestyle and couldn't stop himself. He painted the picture that Evans was addicted to being a big spender and the perks of being wealthy. Judge Watson sentenced him to five years and three months in jail, holding him accountable for his actions and how he used his charm to lure his clients. Life was different when Evans left prison. He no longer had millions of pounds to spend. He worked part-time at an outdoor adventure center for Bendring Trust, a local charity. Neighbors also said he worked in London, where he was seen buying watches and jewelry. He kept a low profile in his neighborhood, barely interacting with neighbors, running from his car to his house. He lived alone in a small house, a far cry from the life he once knew. In October 2022, police officers found his body in his home. Evans was 38 years old, and the cause of his death is yet to be released. Number 1. Atunba Cash 
In October 2018, Atun Bakash was arrested by Turkish police. Danish police contacted Turkish police via Interpol to tell them that there had been unauthorized access to a company named GM Plast's email. Inside the mail was proof that the company had paid large sums into a Turkish bank account. Atunba changed his name from Emmanuel Aneki to Atunba Cash. Nigerian-born Cash became a socialite around 2017 and 2018 when he was seen hanging out in the best clubs where he was a big spender, buying expensive bottles of wine and enjoying the party life. Nobody knew where his money came from. Some thought he was related to wealthy politicians or got rich through an undisclosed business venture. In October 2018, Cash's true source of revenue was unveiled when Turkish police arrested him while he was staying at a luxury hotel. He had several accomplices but was the brains behind the the operation. The group impersonated different companies and sent emails to victims who input personal information into what they thought were legitimate companies. They were running a phishing scheme and stole $1.4 million from victims. When the police raided the luxury hotel that Cash was staying in, they confiscated many items, including one Rolex watch, a luxury car, $85,000, and 5,000 euros. Danish police caught Cash's suspicious activity and passed it along to Turkish authorities. Cash was arrested along with his scammer friends. They're still in prison and expected to stay there for a long time. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section who you think is the most annoying famous playboy.